Hi everyone. I'm super happy to be here in Dublin again in our yellow little t-shirts that will be explained later. So why this talk? We start with the image of uh, yin and yang. Uh, the white part of, the, of this image is uh, me 25 years ago when I was a techno-optimist, when I believed that the science and engineering and specifically the internet are a good thing that are going to help make this world a better place. And about five years ago, I started actually doubting that. And I was like, really? Are we the good guys? And how do you even determine that? So then, that's when I started kind of thinking of how do you know what's a good thing and what's a bad thing? And that is the question of ethics. And that's this gray area around these two white or black areas in yin and yang, which is the values, the moral judgments that we make day to day in all areas of our life, but specifically in technology, because that's where I work. I work for the RIPE NCC, and uh, I'm a community builder, but I started like an engineer uh, in computer science, and so I'm not a philosopher, but I will explain my view of how much I studied the ethics in technology and use the specific example of RIPE Atlas, which is one of the internet measurements platforms and products. So this talk is going to have three parts. First, about the ethics in general and about politics of technology. The middle part, which is about the internet measurements, again, more in general, and then specifically about RIPE Atlas. And then, how do we go from here? And the mes message is you have to find your own ethics. You have to determine your own values by questioning your work uh, and, and your involvement in the internet technologies. I gave this talk multiple times last year. Usually it lasts for an hour. So now we'll try to actually condense this into 15 minutes. And there won't be any time for questions, but I'll be here later after all the talks are finished and then we can have a discussion about this. And these are the inspirations and they will be quoted in the slides and you can also look them up later if you want to go deeper into any of these topics. So from Wikipedia, what is ethics? So it's a philosophical discipline for, in, in a nutshell, discovering what is good and what is evil. And it's a really uh, old discipline. And applied to the sciences, you can see it in all different kinds of ways. But like from my standpoint from many years ago, I used to see the science as a force of good. However, traditionally, scientists had to struggle with these ethical and moral dilemmas in many areas of the sciences, in medicine, in the physics, and in um, ecology, chemistry, or in whichever way we used to make pesticides and then started questioning, like, is this really a good idea? For us, which are more like computer scientists, there are also moral dilemmas and ethical dilemmas in all kinds of areas of computer sciences. And I will leave the pictures speak for themselves. So two quotes from the works that, uh, that I mentioned before. The technology is not neutral. Technology is political. And we have to figure out for ourselves what kind of politics, what kind of values, what kind of influences we have onto the world. And this is from like 2013 that was written by a cryptographer who started questioning his own area of computer sciences after the Snowden revelations. The other quote is from 1980. Uh, do artifacts have politics? And so it's much more deeper about not just computer sciences, but any technological advancement. What kind of power structure is this technology repeating in this new world that we are creating? So going back to the more cyber, in the internet measurements, we have to use the applied ethics. 
And so these are some of the ethical um, disciplines that you can use when you are determining how are your internet measurements collecting the data about the network, but ultimately also about the user. So this is very, very uh, theoretical and philosophical, and uh, you can look uh, into all these um, in this work called Ethics in Network System Research. So that was a multidisciplinary group of people who got together and said, how do we do this? And so they realized that the internet is not for techies alone anymore. The internet is actually influencing the lives of the innocent bystanders of the users, and when we start collecting the internet measurement data, we impact the lives of these people. And so we have the responsibility towards the users because we have the greater power. And that was very difficult for me to, to kind of grasp because when I was growing up, it was like, yeah, we were the geeks and uh, we were just like bullied by all these other people who had power, but the, the world has changed and now the geeks are the ones who have the power and have to be responsible in how to use it. So when conducting internet measurements, it is very important to get the consent of the users. But we often think that those users, they actually don't understand what we do. So how can we get the informed, meaningful consent from them when they don't even know what this thing is doing? So that's a challenge, but we have to keep on working on that. And on the other hand, if you are not a researcher yourself, but if you are publishing the work of the internet measurement researchers, you, you have the responsibility to not publish the unethical research. So these are the questions that you can ask yourselves, and these are some of the uh, measurement platforms that were evaluated in this uh, paper about detecting the network interference. So can you use uh, one of these platforms, and for what is that platform good for, and does it have enough coverage, and so on and so on. But more specifically, I want to talk about the uh, RIPE Atlas and um, RIPE NCC, the company that actually I work for. So how many of you know about the RIPE NCC? Well, okay, everybody. So no, almost everybody. <laughs> Not a big introduction uh, needed. It's a regional internet registry. We mostly give out IP addresses and autonomous system numbers. But because we are the membership organization from all the internet businesses in Europe and surrounding areas. We are also trusted with running other services like measurement services. One of them is Ripe Atlas. So it's an open distributed measurement platform consisting of these hardware probes. We actually have one lying around. Christian is going to mention that later on. And so we collect internet measurement data. And we thought, yeah, it's just TCP pings, who cares? It's not <laughs> telling anything about the users, but it's not like that. So these are the most popular RIPE Atlas features. So mostly we do the ping, the trace route, DNS, and so on. So like really low level networking measurements. And that was by design. So we try to make everything accessible um, and open. We also create visualizations ourselves, but you can get the data and, and analyze it yourself too. And uh, we also have some real-time results. Now, at the design stage, we made some decisions that we thought were a good thing. So we decided to do only active measurements and so not to listen to the user traffic. Uh, we made the device cheap, or that is free, because we give it out, and we fund it by the membership money from the RIPE NCC uh, member contributions. The people that host these probes volunteer to do that, and we hope that they actually understand what they are getting into. So we try to get their informed consent, and we don't reveal the personal information about the probes as far as IP address is not considered a personal information. So the free and open data is also one of the decisions that we have made. And we also limited 
the data and the measurements that you're going to do for ethical reasons. And the main example of that is the HTTP measurement. So you just don't do web measurements because that would put the users in greater danger than just a ping or a trace route. So over the years, we had to change some things like the open source and free software community was like, wait a minute, why should we trust you? What is actually running on that probe? So we had to open up the source code. Uh, we also wanted to kind of say, well, all the measurements should be public, but then the community said, no, we actually want some measurements to be not public, so we had to keep that. I mentioned these HTTP measurements, and we also thought, well, maybe we are not the smartest about the security, so let's get a third party to audit it. So this is what we do to protect, basically, the cats of our probe hosts. Because if we don't, then in the middle of the night, the houses of these probe hosts could be raided because somebody did the measurement to the web address which is actually forbidden in that country, and then the cats would get into harm's way. And we can't have that. Uh, so, if you want uh, more information about the RIPE Atlas, these are the uh, URLs. I only have five minutes left. And the RIPE Atlas is governed by the decisions of the community. So, it's the probe hosts, it's the ambassadors who distribute the probes and help bring them to other regions. It's the coders who actually contribute with the free and open software, it's the people who use our data and people who give us feedback on how should we move further and help us with these ethical dilemmas. So the final message to you is, what do you do at your work? Which ethical dilemmas did you encounter? How did you deal with them? And how are you going to deal with them in the future? And this is what you have to have in mind, that you don't only have to see, like, is this the coolest thing that I can code, but who is going to benefit from it, and is there going to be anybody harmed by your decisions? And I hope that next time, at the next INOG or some other conference, we can also hear examples from your company and your work, how did you deal with these dilemmas and how did you answer these questions? And uh, I'll leave you with uh, more images of uh, non-dualistic way of looking at things. So not everything is black and white, uh, as you can see. Thank you very much. <laughs>